Alright, in this tutorial we're going to look at the Temple of Skulls scenery bit. Now this came out a while ago, but uh, a couple times I used it at different stores and games, and I thought, wow, this is a really nice piece of scenery, nice and big, nice kind of centerpiece, and uh, so I thought I'd pick one up for myself, and here's how I painted it up. So, in general, um, I painted this sort of at the same time as I did my Realm of Battle, you can check out that video, uh, but the stone was basically done with these dirty blacks here, or dirty greys. Uh, some of the... Uh, the uh, uh, dirt on it was done with these sort of uh, colors here. Um, some of the uh, sort of other dirts, so they're kind of complementary, you know, reds and browns, um, reddish browns there. And then also some more uh, tonal variation on the stone done with the greens and these other sort of browns. And then, of course, being a Games Workshop piece of scenery, there's lots of skulls everywhere. Um, and the one thing I missed out was Kaborg Crimson, um, and I'll show you where I used that as well. Okay, so the, the basic idea is all the stone. Um, I've seen some of these where they've done sort of a more a bone color on these skulls, but I thought, you know, these are all carved out of stone, so they're all going to be the same color, at least in mine. But uh, obviously you can do whatever you'd like for yours. So started out by spraying everything a dark brown, and then... Um, giving sort of a stippled dry brush uh, cover with ash and gray and then you know doing some of the uh, cracks and shadows with Newland oil as well as some Agrax Earthshade. The dirt you got some the XV88 now I actually used the uh, the dirt color that came with the scenery kit for the base coat and then I highlighted it up from there. Um, it also comes with the uh, ochre highlight so it, those two were used and if you don't have the scenery kit use these guys here. Um, for some of the brown weathering, just stippling in these dark browns here and then highlighting them up. Uh, some more browns. So the idea here is just you're just kind of mixing in some different browns here and there. And it just makes the things look a little less uniform and uh, more pleasing to the eye. Same with the green. Kind of doing that all over the place. And you'll see that in some of the pictures coming up. Skulls. There's a couple little pits of skulls here and there everywhere and I didn't really go all the way up to the top uh, highlight I just wanted them to be sort of muted a bit more alright so you can see here this is uh, after giving it um, all of my kind of base colors I've got the browns in there and I've got a uh, pretty even cover covering of the gray and uh, using just big big brushes there just to get overall um, coverage also trying to use as little paint as possible so they don't get any blobs or anything and it's just kind of going on almost like a dry brush but uh, very thin and uh, even coats and you can see that there um, at the end I'm going to be putting some static grass along the bottom just to help it blend in with the rest of the scenery okay so you can see the dry brush has gone on there with the uh, the lighter brown and again it doesn't really matter if you overlap things just because it's supposed to be a dirty kind of a, a look so any overlap is not a bad bit okay and there's the uh, the red there um, when I looked at the GW one, I actually got these inverted, but it doesn't really matter. The idea was that after this was all dry brushed, I gave this a nice, even, thin coat of the wash. And uh, what it does is it just ends up tinting it. And uh, because it's a wash, you know, the higher parts are a little bit lighter and the lower parts are a little bit darker. The key is to make sure that you have sort of a leading edge of your wet paint is always uh, going, that never dries. So if you get a dry edge and then you paint over it again, you'll get some uh, some problems there some of the skulls so that's just giving it a base coat and then I'm going to give it a nice uh, deep wash to help uh, bring that in and then dry brush a little bit so there you see it when it's all done um, I put some uh, static grass on there using watered down PVA glue uh, and kind of did that all over the place here and there bits um, just to make it look like it was kind of been overgrown a little bit and uh, yeah now you can see some areas in here that's where you have the different colors of brown and uh, and greens and it just kind of gives it a bit of a mossy kind of a look and uh, helps out with the overall uh, feel of it. You can see in there so dry brushing in some of the browns and uh, trying to get the edge highlights as much as I can with the with the light grays. <clears throat> as well um, painting in all the recesses as much as you can with something like Agrax Earthshade helps uh, make things pop a little bit more, gives a bit more contrast um, and uh, if you do that sort of in between steps of dry brushing the grays you'll end up with uh, better results that don't look like you painted in the recesses. 
And I think that's basically it. You can just see some of the uh, the details here and there, skulls. Didn't put a lot of effort into those because I was painting up a lot of pieces all at once. Here you can see a little bit of a problem with my brush. It didn't have the right amount of paint, so you can see some of the strokes. You just got to be really careful with that, especially on the lighter highlight stages. It's better to do more dry brushing um, in thinner coats than it is to do, try to do it all in one coat. The the dark colors you can kind of get in an overbrush, but the the lighter colors... It really needs to be a good dry brush. Here you can see some of the browns coming through on that and uh, kind of on the back there. As well, there's a couple of joints on here that you got to be careful to fill in with putty. Um, dry brushing really brings those out. You can see it a little bit on that one. You can see a little bit of the joints on this. But uh, if you fill it in and try to sand it as much as you can before you paint, then you'll be rewarded at the end. I hope you like this scenery tutorial. Check out my channel and all my other stuff, and especially my blog. There will be a link in the description below. See you next time.